My name is Dr. George Sparks, and this is Biblical Archaeology from the Ground Down, sponsored by Bible Interact. Today, I have a special guest, Dr. Bobby Sparks, and he is a graduate from the Texas Baptist Institute and Seminary from Henderson, Texas. He also has done research and studies on the Old Testament, tabernacle, temple, related subjects, over 35 years of experience in lectures. He's become very popular for this in seminaries and also in churches throughout the United States and foreign countries. His lectures and his works on scale models of the tabernacle and studies of the temple have earned Dr. Sparks recognition and authority as an Old Testament topics expert. We're going to look at his book today. It's called Where the Temple Was Not Located. And I have to emphasize the word not located. Dr. Sparks, welcome to the program. Thank you, Dr. Sparks, for the uh, invite to be on this program. I enjoy talking about the, this subject, talking about the temple, kind of a favorite subject. So often people really don't dig into that. And I've enjoyed over the years trying to take difficult to understand subjects and explaining them in a simple, understandable. Thank you for having me on the program. I'm Looking forward to uh, discussing this subject. My first question would be, why is it so necessary to, to write a book on where the temple would be located? Because, you know, you go to Jerusalem and it's massive and there's stones in there that weigh hundreds of tons. How can you relocate the temple? Uh, to me, it, it just seems phenomenal. Well, for <laughs> actually, uh, Dr. Sparks, for thousands of years, it was a settled issue. And until the last few years, there have been some people who've come along and said that um, all the historians, all the archaeologists, all the scholars have been wrong, and that all this time we've been perpetuating a uh, hoax. And now they have found new evidence that the temple was never located on Temple Mount, but rather it was located down in the old city of David. So my book. Um, is written uh, where the temple was not located to uh, rebuff the theory that it was down in the old city of David. It was not in the old city of David. There's just too much evidence to uh, refute that, and there is no evidence that it was ever actually located down there. Now, I started off by saying why would somebody relocate the temple? Now, you're not trying to relocate the temple. Your book is explaining why there's fallacies of those that are trying to re relocate the temple. Now, the temple that we're looking at is, of course, Herod's temple, but the Temple Mount, that area is both the time of Herod, the Roman period, and also the time period of King Solomon, which be, would be the Iron Age II period. But we're looking at also evidence later on of the destruction around the Temple Mount, because the destruction was so massive, it cannot be moved, really, without a lot of effort. So this time period would be around 70 AD. It would be the temple that Jesus visited with his disciples, with his disciples, and also the temple that Titus destroyed in 70 AD. Now, that would be correct, right? That is correct. And Herod's temple was built and located on exactly the same location as Solomon's temple, because when Zerubbabel returned from the captivity and started rebuilding the temple, the scripture says that he built it on the same spot where uh, Solomon's temple had been built. And so Herod's temple was a remodel of Zerubbabel's temple. And so it was exactly on the same location where the original Solomon's temple uh, was located. Well, as I travel around doing the lectures on the temple, uh, somebody's always coming up to me and asking about the new evidence that the, <clears throat> that the temple was never on the Temple Mount, but rather down in the old city of David. Now, this theory uh, was originated by a gentleman by the name of Ernest Martin, and he wrote a very thick book, uh, The Temple that Jerusalem forgot. And then uh, uh, Ernest Martin has passed away. He has a very thick book. <clears throat> so other people have followed behind him 
and created some documentaries. A fellow by the name of Ken Klein took a, a very strong effort to create a, a documentary that has convinced thousands that the temple, well, I guess it really wasn't on Temple Mount, it's down in the old city of David. And then following him, a guy named Robert Cornuke uh, wrote a book uh, called The Temple, Could History Be So Stunningly Wrong? And then a guy named Mike Joseph wrote a book on Jerusalem's Temple Mount, The Hoax of the Millennium. All these other people are borrowing from Ernest Martin and they have okay. to quote him as their evidence because okay. they do not find any evidence for themselves that it was down in the old city of David. So they're using Ernest Martin as their authority uh, for their position. So the material is good, nice looking books, uh, some of it well-written uh, uh, videos, quality videos. But the fact about the matter, it's not the truth. Okay, let me ask you one thing, because uh, Martin, Robert Canuck, and Mike Joseph, some of these people you just mentioned, do they, any of them have accredited degrees or scholarship in the subject that they're talking about? Uh, I understand Ernest Martin went over <clears throat> to um, Israel, did a little uh, archaeology digging with, uh, is it uh, Mozart? And... Okay. Um, but Ken Klein, Robert Carnute, Mike Joseph, they have zero experience in archaeology. And frankly, there is not one single scholar, historian, archaeologist, or anyone else that endorses their position. On okay, the other hand, have... the book that you're holding up there, I have a number of scholars to include uh, Lean Rittmeyer, Dr. Scott Stripling, uh, Dr. Randall Price, Dr. Davis. These folk uh, endorsed my book, but none of them endorsed this other position. Okay, because I just see it right here. Your book has the endorsements of Dr. David Graves. I just heard from him the other day. Dr. Lean Rittmeyer, who's a friend of John Mancini, and they went together and uh, in which Dr. Rittmeyer wrote The Quest, the book on the temple. And then we have Dr. Randall Price. He's been around forever. Tons of books on the Dead Sea Scrolls and archaeology. If you've been around and studied archaeology, matter of fact, he was one of the first books that got me interested in archaeology. I, ah, what was it? The Stones Cry Out. That was the name of it. Years ago, maybe 20 yeah. plus years ago. Yeah. So anyway, we have these individuals like Martin that have very minor grasp on archaeology because one dig isn't going to do it hanging out with an archaeologist is not enough really but your guys that you got i know all of them i know david graves i know dr lean rittenmeyer and dr price i know all these guys super scholars very sincere so i want to let people know that these are the people that backed your book it's worth getting all right so we're going to have a contact uh, for you to reach uh, dr bobby sparks so that you can order these books Look, it's not that thick. You can read it maybe in a couple hours if you take your time. But also, it's packed with really cool information and diagrams. Now, that's that's me explaining your book, just so people will know. Now, back to these individuals. What One thing that you mentioned to me is that they misquote the history or the biblical text, such as Joel 3.18. Some of the serious mistakes that they make in their material is that they have a mistaken location of the camp of the Tenth Legion. Uh, it's strictly their opinion without any evidence. They have an incorrect application of uh, future events. They're, they're taking scriptures that have to do with the future and applying them to the past. Thank, frankly, it's just based on their imagination because there is no zero archaeological evidence for it. They overstate the facts. They, they uh, enlarge the uh, old city of David bigger than it really is and shrink the temple smaller than it is in order to make it fit. They add what's not there. Uh, they, all of these authors talk about a bridge that connected the uh, Tower of Antonia to the uh, the Temple Mount complex. 
there is no place in history that says there were two bridges as they claim. They, they put erroneous definitions. Uh, for instance, what's called a colonnade that went around the temple. They, uh, they define that as a bridge. Uh, they have a in, flexible interpretations, I call it, uh, because they say that the city of Zion can only be the old city of David, when in fact the city of Zion is the whole city of Jerusalem and is Jerusalem expanded, Zion expanded. Uh, Martin, of all things, made three major contradictions about where the temple was located in the old city of David. He couldn't even keep his story straight on there. So right. there's so much. And you know, the really the serious thing about this, as far as doctrine is concerned, right. um, it's not so important as exactly where the temple was located. It's the fact that these people are purporting something that is so incredibly false and people are believing it as we would say, hook, line, and sinker, without studying and evaluating it and taking their word for it. Now, look, if we will do that on this subject, we'll be prone to do that on other more important Bible subjects. So right. the lesson is we need to search the scriptures and know what the Bible teaches and just not take man's word for everything. And when you... No, that's Take the so word of correct. God, you won't go wrong. But you know what? Some information is is so easy to get now. You just get on the web and you could you gotta be careful about the web, but you can get, you know, like you can get understanding. You can know who the scholars are versus those that don't have the credentials. And you can look up some more facts if you just take the time instead of just because somebody, somebody's up there in the pulpit, you think they're an authority. But the sad part is, and this is what we talked about, and you're absolutely right, it's not just about the Temple Mount. It's not that they're trying to move it. It's that is so crazy. How does somebody like that get behind the pulpit to tell people this kind of story? Are our churches not protected? I mean, we got pastors that should be trained. And also we have elders, you know, whether men or male or female, but elders in the churches the congregation should be protected against this kind of credulous material being taught. I agree with you 100%. That is just absolutely 100%. Sorry to interrupt, but you just, <laughs> just like got me right there. Like, what yeah. The, yeah. Well, I think the first thing that we could talk about would be a um, platform that we believe the old temple was located on that they say was the uh, camp of the... Uh, uh, Roman 10th Legion. Mm -hmm. Now they they build uh, diagrams, they paint pictures, they show a camp up there that that only would uh, suit the size of the uh, 10th Legion. They even right. expand that because a legion is approximately 6,000. It can be less, it can be more. Never, never exactly a 6,000 number. And And so they say, well, there was 5,000 in the Legion and that there were 5,000 uh, support people. The 10th Legion didn't carry around support people. They did their own laundry. They made their own uh, items. And I'm going to show you here there we uh, go. A, a tile that I uh, hope you can see that and is marked with the 10th Legion. All right. Well, the uh, Tower of Antonia was... Uh, started by the Hasmoneans to protect themselves from the Greeks. Now that was about 100 BC. Time, by the time that the temple was destroyed in AD 70, the tower of uh, Antonia was there a, a good 170 years. Now about 35 BC, oh, Herod expanded the tower, uh, but it, it was there for 170 years. Do your homework. The 10th Legion didn't even come to town until AD 70 to destroy Jerusalem. And in part of their destruction, they destroyed the Tower of Antonia. It said uh, to the foundations. Now, Martin wrote, well, he must have changed his mind. 
what Josephus no. said, he's destroyed it to the foundation and, and that, that platform is still there. And so mm -hmm. Martin and those guys say, well, I guess uh, uh, Titus changed his mind about destroying it. Uh, now, if the 10th Legion was camped there, wouldn't you think we would find all kinds of 10th Legion artifacts? How about that right. uh, a tile that I just uh, showed you? There ought to be all kinds of artifacts. There's right. just uh, virtually nothing Roman found on top of that uh, temple mount. And on top of that, if you go along that wall, that eastern wall is still the original wall area there. And if you have some trash that you want to get rid of, what do you do? You throw it over the wall. Well, right. you'd think at the bottom of that wall, there would be all kinds of debris thrown over from the uh, 10th Legion. No, not any. Uh, that There is no archaeological evidence, no artifacts that ever indicate that the 10th Legion was up there. Frankly, they didn't come to town until... Uh, AD 70 to destroy Jerusalem. Now they remained in Jerusalem for over a hundred years to keep control there in Jerusalem, but their camp was on the western uh, hill and uh, throughout that area. There is archaeological evidence to support that. Now I remember uh, Ernest Martin and he, uh, he was quoted by especially Robert Cornuke that there was not one shred of evidence that the 10th Legion was anywhere other than on that platform. Right. Well, they wrote that book a little too soon uh, because I happened to be in Jerusalem one time in a hotel and there was a uh, uh, archaeological dig in the western part of the city showing uh, the camp of the 10th Legion. So they're not going to have any proof that the 10th Legion was on top of that Temple Mount complex, as we know it. Yeah, I can understand. Not, not only that, but there's certain structures that were built to incorporate with the Temple Mount and, at, and, and access to and from the Temple Mount that are still there to this day, and they're undeniable. And uh, it's also listed on page 46, I held it up maybe a little bit too soon, of your book. It's, um, it's what's wrong with this picture. But it gives the correct answer along with the, the, the uh, hypothesis, if you will, of Carnook and yeah, his scooby gang. Yeah, I, with their permission, I, I'm not sure if they had known what I was going to put the picture in. <laughs> okay. They would have given me permission to use the picture but I have written permission to use that uh, picture. But that okay. was uh, one of the picture diagrams that these guys used to show the location of the temple and everything about it is distorted. Right. So let me say this, that, you know, uh, years ago, Muslim, I'll just say the Muslim community adjusted the temple mount for their services. And they took that dirt and they moved it, I believe at first to the Kidron Valley but now it, that those remains, those piles of debris that they took away from the Temple Mount are now being used uh, by, uh, you could say, individuals in Israel, which is called the Temple Mount Sifting Project. And if you're there for a day, you can go in with uh, supervision, actually go through the debris and sift through the materials. And they're finding all kinds of stuff over the years, such as the tile fragments and coins. But what you said, what's missing? Roman artifacts. Roman, Roman artifacts. artifacts. Not only that, on the artifacts. west side, I believe it's on the west side, of course, but uh, if we went outside the Damascus Gate, is it the west side or north side? <laughs> it's the north side, the Damascus Gate. We have in that area, which we also use as the Via Della Rosa today, mm -hmm. you go through the Lion's Gate, you walk down the Via Della Rosa, there is the pavement, if you will, in which the Antonian Towers once sat. You can't miss it, right? It's there. Somebody points it out, they'll say, oh, there it is, you know? Uh, so there are structures around the Temple Mount. That's one. We know where the foundations of the Antonian Towers were. Number two, Robinson's Arch. 
It's on the southwestern side, and the ruins for that are still there. Also, a stone that was once high on the Temple Mount and was thrown over by the Romans was the, the stone of the trumpeting, and it says on it, the place of the trumpeting, and of course, that was found uh, in the uh, archaeological excavation on the south side. But we have structures like the double and the triple gate, and I don't want to get rambling, but go ahead. Yeah, you know, uh, Josephus gave a very clear description that on the uh, southwest uh, corner of the uh, temple uh, complex, he describes the place of trumpeting and that that's where they would blow the shofar with the uh, ending and beginning of days, the uh, holidays and so on. That That's when they would blow the trumpets for all the people to hear. And he said they could hear it in the southern city. And of course, they would hear it in the uh, uh, Western city. So he described that as being right on the corner of the temple, the temple complex. Well, that was found at the base, uh, what we now believe and could affirm is the actual temple mount. It was not found down in the old city of David. That thing weighed thousands of pounds. They didn't take it in the middle of destruction from the old city up to there, but that trumpeting stone was found right on the bottom of the debris. It was the first thing that would have been pushed off right at the bottom of the southwest corner of that uh, temple complex as we believe it, not in the old city of David. Josephus also described there is a stairway that, that came from the southwest corner of the temple uh, complex, and then it turned and went south. Well, there is evidences there of what's called Robinson's Arch, that he made the discovery that there is the remains of what would have been an archway, uh, and it's clearly visible, uh, an archway from that uh, temple area and it turned south and went down toward the old city of David. Right. So, all right. So the archways, Robinson's Arch, uh, the southern, what we call the southern rabbinical teaching staircase. It's the large staircase that goes up to the double and the triple uh, access doors, entry and access doors. Then a little bit further south, we have the mikvah bass that's ritual bass along with what that area is called the ofel and i think elat mazar is digging there at this time and they suggest they have found uh the remains of the city of david where they suggest the temple would be karnuk and those guys what i say they're scooby gang we have evidence for other structures there are remains and ruins on top of them because they have to remove that for the excavation and go through the different strata levels, but they don't find evidence for another temple, right? Right. And you know, uh, Josephus described on the southern end of the temple complex, there were these gates, the double right. gate, triple gate. Right. And that inside those gates, which we're not allowed to go now, but previous archeologists who were permitted to go said that inside those gates were mikvah baths. There are a number of mikvah baths outside that gate. Now, why in the world would the Romans be building mikvah baths for the Jews to come up to uh, the Tower of Antonia? Well, they didn't. It all fits the exact description of Zo Josepha, Josephus, who was an eyewitness. He was there. He saw it. He described it. And that's exactly his description. You know, okay. one more little tidbit. Josephus talked about uh, the temple at the uh, time of Solomon was a complex of 500 uh, cubic uh, each direction. And not quite right. a square, but I think we call it a trapezoid. Herod, when he came along, he expanded the complex to the, a little to the north, uh, some to the west, and some to the south. Now, uh, before Herod expanded it, the, uh, uh, the Hasmoneans, about 100 BC, they had some expansion. And then Herod enlarged it to the south even greater. Now, if you look 
at that Temple Mount complex that mm -hmm. we believe the temple was located, where Carnuk and them denied that it was located. But if you look at it, look at the wall, you'll see a Hasmonean style addition to that wall, and then the Herod addition to that wall that expanded it further south. Herod had a peculiar way of, uh, of, of decorating his stones on the, on the edges, and the Herodian stones are on the southern end of that temple complex, just exactly like Josephus describes. For the listening audience that might not understand why the mikvahs are kind of important when we look at the Temple Mount, and you mentioned that they were not close to the Antonian fortress. The Antonians were Roman. They had no need for ritual baths. However, the Jews did. So where the Jews entered the Temple Mount, that's where, where we find these ritual baths. So they cleanse themselves before they enter the, the, the temple, uh, you could say the temple proper, that zone. And it was important for ritual cleanliness, all right, just so that they know that. Um, yeah. And that's why you made that statement. Then they say it wasn't on the Temple Mount. We've just discussed the archaeology proves it was on the Temple Mount. Then they say it was built down in the old city of David. Right. And especially uh, Robert Cornuk has a diagram in his book where he shows the temple is located in the old city of David he makes two very serious errors. One of them, he enlarges the size of the old city of David to be bigger than it really is. And then he diminishes the size of the temple and squeezes it in so that it will sit inside the old city of David. Well, here's the problem. If we start with just the basic 500 uh, cubic uh, dimension that Josephus gives of the uh, Solomon uh, Temple Complex, and you uh, figure that at 18 inches per cubic, you get 750 feet. And actually, evidence is that the cubic was actually 20.67 inches per cubic. So that would mean that even the Solomon Complex would be over 800 feet squared. That would okay. make the temple complex to be 17 acres. They put the 17-acre temple complex in a 10 to 12-acre city. Now, so they can big. figure that out. Uh -huh. But you see, the figures won't work, so they diminish their drawings to make you think it will work. It will not work. Okay. Hey, Bobby, let's pause here for a second. And I want to break this up into two parts. So